Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 16 of my C Sharp video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to focus completely on threads as well as how we can use sleep, lock, priority, passing data to threads, and a whole bunch more. Like always, all the code as well as a transcript of this video is available in the description underneath this video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so here we are over in Visual Studio, or if you're on Mac or Linux, you're using Xamarin. And you're going to make sure that you're going to be using the system threading, the guy up here, and otherwise nothing here is going to work. And then basically with threads, they're going to allow you to execute multiple pieces of code that can share resources and data without corrupting it. And some important things to remember is that you cannot guarantee when a thread is going to execute. You also must lock resources until a thread is done. And if you do not do that, there is a risk that your data could be corrupted. So um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a simple little program just so you can see what a thread looks like. So we're going to create a thread. So you just type in a thread t is equal to new thread and I'm going to call for just a whole bunch of ones and zeros to be printed. So I'm going to say print one just to do something really simple. So this is going to be like a random binary number that we're going to be generating here. Now if you want to start your thread after you create it, you just call start on it. And I'm going to show you a whole bunch of other different ways you can do it. Whoops, let's change this to T and let's change this to T. All right, so that looks a little better. Now what we're going to do underneath here is we're going to create that print one method. So I'm going to go static void and print one just to keep it very simple. And then inside of here I'm going to have a for loop int i is equal to zero and while i is less than 100 or well let's do 1000 just so we can see a lot of data i plus plus and then this guy down here i'm going to use a shortcut i always want to remind you that just type cw tab tab and here we're just going to say console now yeah, let's do console write so we can keep everything on one page and zero. Oh no, this is gonna be the print one part, so let's keep it like that. And then what we're gonna do up here is the main uh, function is actually a thread as well. So, so that you know that. And we can come up here and we will go after the start. I'm gonna paste that in there just to show you how things will change. And up here, this is gonna print zero on the screen. And then this is going to obviously keep the console running so that we can see everything that's going on. All right, so you're gonna, I'm just gonna run it and you're gonna see how this works. So, and you can see that it went and shared times between the main thread and the thread you created. So it printed a whole bunch of zeros, then it printed some ones, and then it went back and printed some zeros, and then some ones, and so forth and so on. And left unabated, that's basically what threads will do. If you run multiple threads, it's going to shift back and forth and let one thread, being the main thread, main thread, it's going to run for a little bit, and then it's going to jump down here, and it's going to allow this thread right here that's calling print1 to execute over and over again until they are both finished. Okay, so that is a simple example of how you can use two threads. And now I'm going to jump over and show you an example of sleep and how that can help us. Okay, so now with sleep or the sleep method, what that's gonna allow us to do is have a thread be suspended for a designated amount of time. And I'm just gonna show you an example here. Basically what I want to tell my computer to do is to run a program slowly. So I want it to print out zero through 10 and I want it to do it in one second increments so that we can see it occur on the screen. Now what I'm going to do is go for and int i is equal to zero and we're going to continue doing this while i is less than 10 and we'll increment i once again just to keep that nice and simple. And then inside of here we're going to come in and do a console write line and we're going to print out our number. However, after we print out the number, we want to call thread and sleep and tell it to pause for 1000 milliseconds or one second. And you're going to see how that is going to affect everything. And of course, I'm also going to come in here and increment num each time through so that we can count out from zero. It's actually going to be zero to nine. And then we can come down here and we can just go and type out something like uh, thread ends so that we know that the thread ends. And we're gonna get into names and priority and checking what threads are running and so forth and so on 
just want to start off with a very simple example. So now let's try to run that. And you can see right here, it's printing one, two, three, four, five, so forth, and so on with one second increments in between them. And there you can see thread ends prints. Okay, so pretty cool stuff. So that's an example of how we can slow down a thread using sleep. And now I want to show you a more elaborate example in which we will lock a thread so that we can keep from contaminating data. Okay, in the same program, I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it bank account. And the goal here is that we are going to try to protect our bank account from going below zero. We are going to try to keep users from taking more money out than they have in their bank account. And we're going to use lock to do that. So first I'm going to create this guy and this is going to be the object that we are going to use to lock everything down so that the bank account can't go below zero. And then I'm going to have a balance for my bank account because without that, that's not going to make much sense. So we can just go and do that. And is there anything else I want to do? Hmm, not really. Okay, so let's create a constructor for our bank accounts. And this guy is just going to receive a double that's going to be the balance for the bank account. So we'll just go balance like that and whatever balance they pass in. We are then going to allow them to withdraw money from their bank accounts. So I'm just going to call this withdraw and it's going to be past some amount that they're going to be able to withdraw from the account. Here I'm going to check that our balance minus the amount is not less than zero. And if it is, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say something like sorry and let's print out the balance amount in oops let's throw that like that in account just to give a simple type of message there and then i'm just going to return whatever the balance of the account is just to do something all right otherwise if that doesn't work i'm going to use lock here and what this is going to do is it's going to keep any other threads from coming in here and trying to access all of the code between these curly braces or anything inside of here until each thread is finished. So here I'm going to say if balance is greater than or equal to the amount that they want to withdraw, I'm going to do a console right here and I'm going to say removed and da, 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 left in account and then close that off and then get the two amounts. So I'm gonna have the amount that they asked for, and then I'm going to get the balance, whoops, minus the amount, all right? So that's all set up. And then of course, after I do all of that, I'm gonna to have to change the balance amount, and I'm just gonna go balance equal to whatever the amount was, and subtract the amount they took off of there. And then after this, let's return the new balance. All right, pretty simple stuff. Now, one thing that's important, I'm going to show you how you're going to be able to pass arguments to threads in a minute. But by default, you can only point at methods without arguments and also methods that return nothing or have a void for the return amount. So what we're going to do is I'm going to say public void and I'll say issue withdraw. I guess that should be withdraw. Whatever, I'm going to keep it that way. And we'll say withdraw, and I'm just going to say that every single time somebody takes money out of here, they're going to take $1 out of it. And this is giving me error messages, but I'm going to be using this in a second, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so basically this is just here so that the thread is going to be able to access this guy up here in, a, in the way that, like I said, by default threads are not allowed to deal with methods that have arguments or aren't void. But like I said, I'm going to show you how to pass arguments to threads here in a minute. All right, so now we're going to come back up inside of our main function. And we're going to start playing around with this. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a bank account and call that account new bank account. And you're going to get to see how threads sort of like hop around like we did in the first example. And I'm going to create a thread array and I'm just going to call this threads and then new thread array and we're going to create 15 of these guys inside of here and something that's interesting is the current thread is going to 
tell you what current thread is being active and main is the only one that's out there right now. So what we're gonna do is we're also gonna use the name property here to name our main thread main. And then I'm gonna show you in a minute how we can go and get the current name of the thread. I then wanna create 15 threads that are gonna call issue withdraw to execute. So I'm gonna go int i is equal to zero, while i is less than 15, and increment i here. And then this guy, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a thread, obviously. New, thread, new, and then we're gonna call thread start. And then we're going to call our bank account, and we're gonna call the issue withdraw method inside of it. And like I said previously, we are not, oops, go like this, there we are. Like I said previously, we are not going to be able to call methods that receive attributes or return values. I'm then going to get the name, or I'm gonna set the name for each of these individual threads to whatever the value of i is at the moment as we're cycling through here. And then I need to add it to my threads array. So like this is equal to t. Then after that, I'm going to have all of these different threads execute. So I'm gonna say going i is equal to zero. And we're gonna continue cycling through this as long as it's less than 15 and increment i of course. Then we're going to go and check if a thread has started or not. So I'm gonna go thread and you do that by using a property called is alive. So we're just gonna output that on the screen just to show you something else you can do with threads. And I'm gonna go threads i and get the name. That's what I assigned up here. Where did I do it? Right there. We're gonna have that print out. And then I'm gonna check if it's alive by going threads i and by alive i mean is it currently started or not is alive we'll save that then after we do that we're actually going to start the thread so to do that we just issue start on it like this and then we can check if it's alive again so let's just go and copy this and this is going to now that we know it's going it's not going to be alive there it will be alive here and we just want to output that to the screen just to see it Another thing we can do is we can get the priority of a thread, and we're just gonna do this outside of here, outside of these threads executing, so we're going to be doing it with main. So here, I'm just gonna go console. So what we can do here to get the priority is just go current priority, and get that value right there. And we can just call thread on the current thread that it's running, and every thread is going to have a priority of normal, and this is sort of a touchy sort of subject. You can change the priorities of your thread, but that doesn't guarantee that the highest precedence, but that doesn't guarantee that the highest priority is actually going to receive precedence. So for the most part, it is kind of worthless to play around with priority and kind of dangerous. But just so you know, you can change the priority to normal, which is the default, lowest, below normal, above normal, or highest. So you can play around with that and see what happens and how it affects your code. But like I said, it's probably better to just ignore it altogether. I just wanted to cover it just so that you knew what it was. All right, and then we can come in and say thread and ending. And this is going to be main. And you might see some crazy stuff that goes on. And then we'll just go current thread and get the name right here. And console read line. And what's going on down here? It's giving me an error. Oh, I see why. This guy right here needs to be moved. So let's get rid of that right there. And then let's put this down here. So there we are, got our curly brackets in the right place. And save it, and everything should be good. So let's run it and see what happens. And we can run through here exactly what's going on. And you can see, thread zero is alive false, and then it is alive, thread one, and so forth and so on. And you can see how these threads are coming to life and starting to perform actions. You can see right here that we removed $1, $9 left in an account, thread four is alive true, and so forth and so on. So you can see how these threads become active, however, they are not executing, they're basically staying in line, and the reason why they are staying in line is because we are locking the account down right there. If we did not do that, that you'd get all kinds of crazy results. And go in there and run it and just get rid of the lock and you'll see exactly what happens. So basically, a lock just protects our account data from going down below zero. 
remove one dollar one dollar left in the account remove one dollar zero left in the account and then you can see right here sorry zero is in the account and all the other threads are continually trying to pull money out of there but they are not receiving it you're also seeing here that we are using the thread name and outputting it obviously we're using is alive here to check if the thread is currently active or not here you can see the default priority for the current active thread, which is main, is normal. And you can see right here where we're end or whenever main comes to an end. Okay, so a little bit more elaborate example and very, very important that we understand lock and how it protects our data. And now, like I promised, I'm going to show you how to, it is possible to pass data to threads. Okay, so you're going to be able to pass arguments to a thread using Lambda expressions, and we've covered those in detail here in the past. And I'm going to show you a quick example of how exactly that's going to work for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a thread once again, equal to new thread. And then let's go and create our method here first that we're going to be calling static void. And what this is going to do is receive a number and count to that number. So we'll go max number and then throw a for loop inside of here. So int i is equal to zero. We're going to continue looping as long as i is less than or equal to the maximum number passed inside of it. And then, of course, we're going to increment the value of i. And we're going to just print out i inside of here. Okay, so let's save that. So that's what count two is going to do for us. Now I'm going to show you up here how we can go and call for that to execute. So we're going to go thread and inside of here, inside of these parentheses, we are then going to point to count two. And we're going to say that we want to count to the value of 10 with that. And then we're going to go T start and execute that. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you how to actually use a multi-line Lambda to have multiple different things execute here. So I'm gonna go thread once again, and then let's come down to this guy and then have them start once more like that, and then like that. And then inside of here, we're gonna call count to with more values. So we'll say count to five, and then we'll also say count to six. I don't know, just something. And then you're going to watch this. And because things aren't locked down or sleep isn't used and so forth and so on, it's going to sort of execute crazily. But you're going to see the fact that we are able to pass in threads or pass attributes into threads and see them execute. And you can see, indeed, starts executing 0, 1, and then the 1 to 5 comes in or 0 to 5 comes in and starts executing. And then you can see here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then the original thread that was called goes and continues writing out to the screen to 10. So let's pay attention here. It says 0, 1, and then it starts the 5. Let's run it again, see if we get the same results. Da, 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 da. And here you see you get different results. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 7. And then the next thread kicks in. You see it then goes to 5, 0, and then the original thread starts up, continues to 10, and so forth and so on. So it sort of reinforces the fact that you're going to want to use lock and sleep and things like that with threads just to keep your data protected. But overall, that is just a quick run through of how threads work. And as the series continues, I'm going to provide more real world examples. Just wanted to clear up a topic that is sometimes kind of confusing. So like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.